Well, hello, everybody. Here we go. Welcome to the Profit Tool Belt podcast. It's just for construction and contracting business owners who are curious to find ways to work smarter, not just harder. Today's a doozy. It's a doozy, folks. My name is Dominic Rubino. I'm going to be your host, but our guest today is Tom Reaver. You know Tom from The Contractor Fight uh, and his podcast. Uh, he's another big name in the industry, and I'm very proud to have him here with us today. We're going to be talking about something near and dear to all of our hearts. How much should I mark up materials? On a construction or contracting job, has that question ever haunted you? It used to haunt me until I started invoicing with confidence. I think you're going to hear that from Tom as well. So it's nice to hear the same message from a different person. Listen, before we jump into that, I want to reiterate, I want to lay down the foundation about what this podcast is all about. What I do is I show contractors how to get back in control of their construction business, even if they don't know where to start. You see, the truth is you don't need a lot of extra time or a business degree to build a profitable and solid contracting business. You just need simple systems and you need some new ideas to old problems. Simple systems that will give you quiet confidence. Now, for too long, and you've probably seen this as well, our industry has been keeping secrets, acting as if one person's the only one who has the secret sauce on building a profitable construction business. Well, it's not the case. And I'm here to put an end to that. Those days are over. On this show, you're going to learn. I'm going to show you how to put simple systems in place in three biz, in three places, sorry, in the office, on a job site, and in your shop. Now, if there's a bonus fourth place that I show people simple systems, it's actually it's the mindset of success and business ownership. Getting your business to the next level starts in your head, just like it starts in mine. And you're going to hear Tom and I agree the heck out of each other on that here today. I'm a business owner, and I'm also a business coach. The only people I work with are construction and contracting business owners who want to get to the next level in their business. So on the show, I'm going to share those simple systems. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to reinvent that thing. Just get that bad boy rolling. So if you're a business owner and you find out that you find yourself curious on how to find ways to run your business profitably, to have more time off, do the things you love to build a team you can rely on and grow a company that one day you could sell or pass on to somebody else or just live off the cash flow, well, then you are in the right place. You know who else is listening to this show? Other business owners just like you, other contractors. They might be family businesses, they might be partnerships, or they might be running it solo. Now, I host this podcast because one day I want to be your business coach. I'm here earning the right to be at the table when you make that decision. And as a matter of fact, I have a team of business coaches that I've personally hand-selected. I have very high expectations for the people that join my team, as you would expect, and I'm proud of every single one of them. As you listen to this podcast, ask yourself if you think me and my team might be the right tool to help you get to the next level when the time is right. Now, with that being said, let me go into business coaching mode right now. I'm going to challenge you. In this episode, Tom and I are going to challenge you. You're going to hear something, learn something, or realize something. And on that, both of us want you to take action in the next 24 hours. And then we both want you to pay attention on how that improves your business or your life. I hope you know this podcast is built to educate, inform, and inspire you. So let me get in your head. I'm going to ask you that inspirational question. Are you happy being a contractor who runs a few crews? Or do you want to be a business person who just happens to run a construction company? And by the end of today's episode, you will know the answer. Let's get to it. Ah, uh, Mr. Tom Reber, how the heck are you? What's going on, Dominic? How are you? I'm good. I haven't talked to you. Yeah. In, well, I can't say I haven't talked to you in a while since you know I've been planning this. We've been talking a lot. Talking a lot. Had a technical snafu day. This was supposed to happen a few weeks ago, and here we are today. So yeah, it's all everybody, good, man. Everybody listening thinks that uh, technical snafus only happen on the job site, but they happen everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I had uh, the internet gods in our area just weren't having it for a few weeks there. It was crazy, man. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah. It's somebody somebody in a backhoe close to you. He's like, look, Tom Reaver's internet's running through here. Let's just tap it with the back of the shovel and see uh, what happens. Yeah, it had to be something like that. I don't know. It's It was crazy, though. But yeah. no, it's good to finally be here and have a conversation with you, man. Yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to it as well. And I think this is going to be a very popular episode because you and I were mm -hmm. biting off a big chunk to chew. Yeah. The topic yeah. today is how much <laughs> do I mark up for materials? Mm -hmm. You think we can get through that in an hour? 
probably can. I, I, I'm more curious how many people right out of the gate are going to be like, oh, these guys are full of crap. You can't do that. Hey, let's you start know? with the fact so, that you and I are full of crap and work our way yeah, back up. There you go. All right, yeah. cool. It's our, it's our case to make at this point, yeah, right? There you go. That's a good so, way to say it. No, all good. Now, listen, some people may not have heard about you before or mm-hmm. watched your YouTube videos or heard your podcast. So I'll ask the question I ask all of my guests. You ready for this? I got gotcha. you. Uh, <clears throat> Tom Reber, who the heck are you? And how is it you come to be speaking all these forward-facing contractors all over the world? Oh, man. Who am I? You know, I'm uh, I'm a guy who wakes up every day trying to add value to the world by demolishing, helping people demolish mediocrity in themselves at, at home and in their businesses. I mean, is is as broad as I could give it to you mm-hmm. there, right? Um, and I just happen to do it mainly in the contractor space through our show, The Contractor Fight, and YouTube and books and this and that. But, you know, I'd say first and foremost, man, I'm a dude who broke, grew up totally broke in a family of contractors, mm. ran my own businesses for a number of years and finally figured it out. And we were banging out three to 400 painting projects a year and stuff. And that was kind of cool. Sold my half of the business in 2012 and, you know, wanted to move out of state and just had some bigger goals and ways that I wanted to impact the world. And I was, I was done, you know, if you just, yeah. just to be blunt and, um, you know, I, I'm a coach at heart. You know, I coached high school football for 17 years. So it was just naturally, I just want to, I wake up every day wanting to help people get better, you know? Yeah. And so, you know, I've been blessed to, to just have, um, you know, and you, you get this cause you do this, right? Like you, you hit record one day and some people gave a crap, right. And, <laughs> and they kept the listening. audience you, you do. Yeah. yeah. And they keep coming back and, you know, we're, um, so I'm, I'm just blessed to be able to, do what I do and be me and help other people win in, in life and in business. Um, you know, at our events and stuff, I, I start out every event by basically telling our, you know, there's usually, you know, 400 or more contractors in the room where I go, I don't really care about your business. <laughs> you know, I care about you. I care about your life. Oh, I care it's about funny the you type say of, that. Yeah. Uh, the type of husband you are, you can always start a business. You can <clears throat> always, get a career or find a way to make money. Money's the easy part, man. Mm. And, um, you know, but don't, don't burn your family and your health and relationships to the ground, uh, because you're unwilling to do what it takes to be a successful business owner because right. the business should, should serve you, not the other way around. And so, man, and I, and I'm like, I've been there, I've been bankrupt, made millions. Um, I, you know, the first, uh, the first, sizable job for me as a painting contractor. I sold for $28,000 and I was like, I'm going to be rich. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it was my first That's year. That's a good business. size job though. That's not a bad job. Yeah. I was going into my first winter and my first year of business. Hmm. And I chased this thing down for months. Long story short, I charged 28 grand. It cost me 45 to do it. Oh. Which means in my world, I should have charged about a hundred grand right. for the project. Uh, what made it worse, it was GC'd by a guy who GC'd his own project. He was an attorney and he was colorblind. So like, it's all this, it it was just, so I, I've learned. You had how, me an attorney, but then colorblind yeah. added to the problem, right? Yeah. And cause I didn't have paperwork in order. I didn't price my work right. I was selling from a place of desperation, you know, mm. all those things that we struggle with when we start yep, a business. Yep, and, yeah. You know, he just knocked me around for about a year. You know, I couldn't finish this project. No matter what I had to strip, he had like these three gorgeous staircases. He approved the stain colors on and then he'd have a strip them because he didn't like them. And then, then like six months later, I find out he's griping about the stain color one day on a Saturday. I met him there and his girlfriend was with him. She goes, what do you care? You're colorblind. And I just looked at him and I went, are you kidding me? That's what, so, but I didn't have paperwork in order, man. I didn't, you know, I was, I was a chicken. You know, you're new in business. That's how you learn. You're new. And you're like, if I stand up for myself you know, which I never knew how to do in the business Mm -hmm. world, they're not going to pay me. And then if they don't pay me, I can't feed my kid. And they'll say bad things to the next person. I'll never get the next job. Yeah. Yeah. So I I've been there and, and, and I've, you know, I mean, dude, I've, I grew up, uh, spent two years in special ed. I rode the short bus, you you name it when it comes to mental negative self-talk and head Mm -hmm. trash, I've had it struggle with it, still have flare ups now and then. And, um, yeah, I'm starting to lose my sentences. I'm I'm losing words halfway through my sentences, and I don't know when that started. But well, I think 
that happens because as you get older, you get wiser and you have so many options of good things to say. You just don't know what to They're, say. You kind of have gray, this block. The so. gray hair I've earned. I've earned the gray, <laughs> right? I've earned the gray. Well, listen, you and I today are going to talk about what an eternal, in an eternal mm-hmm. internal struggle. Because, you know, both you and I deal with contractors who are out there trying to do the best they can, but they they struggle. I want to win the job, but they don't know how much to mark up before it gets too much, before mm-hmm. the customer turns them away. And I was just rewriting my book and um, I was remembering one of the stories I had that still sticks with me 35 years later when a lady said, to me, I presented her a price and she said, you're trying to retire off this job, which in hindsight, you know, I was about 20 years old. So mm-hmm. how would that be realistic? Yeah. So I felt, but I felt really bad that I marked it up too much. And so I came back mm-hmm. to her with another price. I go, I'm sorry, here's a better price. And did I win that job? No, I never mm-hmm. did win that job. And probably thankfully, I never yeah. did get that customer. But yeah. the reason I want you on here is we want to pick your brain and get inside this conversation for two reasons. Number one, they might be tired of hearing me talk about this. Yeah. But number two, I want to hear your perspectives and maybe I'll learn something from you. Mm-hmm. How much do I mark up for materials? Mm-hmm. So lead us through that conversation. Yeah, so I want to pull everybody way back to the one of the overall day one groundwork foundational concepts in the contractor fight. Okay, Mm -hmm. so everything that's going to come out of my mouth is based on this. Sure. (laughs) Okay, if it costs you a dollar, charge at least two. Okay, so that's that is the context or the foundation that like I said, I'm working from. So what that means is that we have a fundamental belief here that, um, you know, if you're not striving to sell and produce at at least a 50% gross profit, Mm -hmm. um, you're going to struggle more than you need to financially. Now, um, back to you going back to that lady and lowering your price and, you know, me for so many years, I remember typing up bids and I'd, be at 11 o'clock at night, you know, and I'm going to hit send and I'm like, ah, and I'm negotiating against myself. And yeah. All this other Nobody stuff, else right? is in the room. You're just negotiating. Yeah. And this comes from not having confidence in your numbers. So, you know, if you don't have confidence in your numbers, then any number you spit out, you're going to have insecurity around. Yeah. But what we've found um, is we've helped people is when you really understand what it costs you to be in business to stand behind your work, to build a brand, to recruit top talent, to, you know, um, you, you know, all the things we could say. Yeah, show up for warranty it's, work a year later, all of the yeah. things we need to run the business. Or just be able to have a pace of life where you're not running from job to job just to collect deposit checks to pay for two jobs ago and stuff like that. And all these things that give contractors a bad name. I believe one of the things that just starts in your confidence in your numbers. And so we, um, and when you have your con- when you have confidence in numbers and you have some history and some KPIs and some data behind you as you grow your business you might decide that you know our sweet spots are 42% if we're there we're good right sure. but we just start when people come to us most like 95% of them have zero idea what their numbers are 100% so, right on any numbers yeah so i just go right out of the gate the gallon of paint costs you 80 bucks, charge 160 bucks for the gallon of paint. Right. And if labor for the day is a thousand bucks, charge at least 2000. All right. Now you raise gross profit one of two ways or a combination of both that you do the company. You raise your prices or you get more efficient in the field and your, your mm-hmm. cost of goods goes down. The blended part of that brings you the gross profit that you need. Um, we're also operating, and I'll talk more about the materials here in a minute because um, I know that some people right now are going. I dropped thirty-five grand on cabinets for a customer, and you're going to tell me I got to charge seventy thousand dollars for those? And doesn't right. even include labor. We'll get there. Okay, so um, when you have a higher gross profit, you need less work to break even. Mm. Okay. So if my overhead per month is 20,000 bucks for easy math, I talked to a guy the other day, man, who is a GC. And I'm like, what, what's your gross profit? And he's like 30%. Okay. I said, okay. Um, now we, we have a community of over 400 contractors. Over half of them are GCs, by the way, mm-hmm. in, our, in our main program. Um, our GCs are getting 50%. I was going to say 30 is a little bit light because after you take out operating costs, there's not a lot Mm -hmm. left over around 20, right? 
Yeah. I mean, so if you do a hundred thousand dollar project, you should be profiting 50 grand gross profit to go towards your overhead. And, you know, we're helping guys do this, whether they do it in house or sub it out or whatever it is, but just why we go 50% when you got a $20,000 a month overhead, whatever. Yeah. If you divide that by 0.3, a 30%, you got to deposit $67,000 into the bank just to zero out on the month mm. to make no profit. But at a 50%, you only got to deposit 40 grand. Right. Right. And so divide. You're doing the same work anyways. You yeah. might as well do less work. Yeah. So so that's your break even revenue. You know, a lot of, and the other big thing I know you see when you look at people's numbers is they might be selling the job at a 50 or a 45 or whatever, and they're producing it at a 20 or 30 or 35. And so they're not making what they think right. because they have a production issue. So I, I share all this just for context around, what we've found doing this for a decade or whatever and helping thousands of contractors is the fastest way to win financially is raise your gross profit. Okay. I, in fact, yeah. I get a lot of crap from people on my YouTube channel. Like you never talk about net profit. And I'm like, you guys don't even understand what a cost of goods means, man. And direct cost <laughs> Before we get gross down to profit. Net. Like yeah, yeah. And you want to, you want more bottom line, fix the gross profit. Let me, so, let me ask you something on this, because one of the things that I've found over the years is that the biggest resistance to a price increase, if I'm looking at two people in a room, one's the business owner and one's the consumer, mm -hmm. who do you think has the biggest resistance to increase in price? The business owner. Every single mm -hmm. time. They're operating every time. Fear. And and you mentioned it earlier when you said you're sitting alone in the room, you're about to hit send on a proposal, mm -hmm. and you're negotiating alone in the dark by yourself. They're never going to pay this. I can't do that. Uh, why would I charge this for the, I better, I better tighten, tighten it up. We'll win this right. job and I'll do better in the next one. And that becomes a poem you say to yourself every time you're sending out an estimate, you're, all you're doing is taking food out of your own family's mouth. Right. Right. So that situation of the business owner being afraid is because we are, we are all, um, we do, what is it? You, you default to your highest level of training, mm, right? Okay. So if it's you've never been punched in the face, sparring with somebody, you're afraid to get punched in the face in real life. If you've never um, put the work in to understand what your true numbers are yeah. and job costed your projects, and then somebody says you need to lower your price, you're now in unfamiliar territory. You're operating on sh on like sand instead of a foundation of concrete where you right. know your numbers. So, you, so you suddenly you believe them. Yeah. Or if you're not role-playing in the sales process. So our, our progress in our world is confidence in numbers, sell unafraid, get the right eyeballs like that trifecta mm. the holy mm -hmm. trinity of the contractor fight training sure. right yeah and so now i want to get back to the question that you asked about material markup all right so there are some people that just go i'm just doing my direct job cost times two and calling it a day that's it and they work on bringing yeah. in more of the right prospects, building the brand, really understanding how to sell and connect with their prospects. And they're selling the, the right jobs for them at the right profit margins, and they're killing it. One of my old business partners um, who retired recently, Steve, um, that was Steve's model. Steve Just times didn't, two. It was, everything was times two. If he, if he had to rent a piece of equipment for a thousand bucks a day, he charged the customer 2000 a day. But that's the same okay. formula you went back to earlier. Exactly. So there's nothing wrong with right. that formula. Right. Yeah. We're, so, and and I'm not here to judge how somebody does this, right? I'm just here to go, here's some possibilities. And you no, know, if I'm like painting, right? I come from the painting world, maybe 12, 15, 16% of our revenue went to materials. Mm. You know, what's it for a GC, right? Like it's it, well, depending it, on what your markup it, is, it right? Depends but on it, so many things and what the yeah, product but, you is, know, yeah. You know, like yeah. on a, you know, I have a 4,000 square foot house or whatever, you know, it might be 1500 bucks in material to paint my house, you know? So for me to charge three grand, not a big deal. You know, if you're putting cabinets in a new kitchen that costs you 17 grand, I could see where you could pucker up a little bit, you know? And say, hey, and, you know, how am I going to do it? Like, Damn, but that, how am I going to do But that's that? a case so, where you've got to know your numbers, Tom, and you've got right. to say, well, we're not going to double the price of the cabinets, but over the whole job, I'm going to make the money back. And having that confidence in your numbers allows you to know where to ignore them and where to double down. Yeah. And so one of the, yeah, I don't, I don't care if you're selling hot dogs, paint jobs, or kitchens, you got to know your numbers. It's your, it's your, 
I mean, dude, what's a business? What's the purpose of a business? To meet a need and get paid, <laughs> right? Like, oh, that's one, a way shorter definition than I've got. One one A and one B. Yeah. One yeah. A and one B. Meet a need, make money. Yeah. Okay. So, and make enough money where you can have something to show at the end of your career for all the service that you've provided to the world and you give your people a future. This is why I believe the recruiting issue in the trades right now is because contractors don't live attractive lives. Mm. So oh, the people and, don't I mean, see it and say, I want to be a contractor. Yeah. I want to be a carpenter, yeah. a I painter, mean, do the, a plumber. The, our, our company vision in the contractor fight is, is to create a world where people no longer look at construction as a fallback option. That's our vision. And our yeah. mission is literally, we like short, punchy things here. It's strong you, strong home, fat wallet. Nice. Imagine if every contractor was strong. Like I'm talking like they're not a big fat slob with plumber's crack, right? And and they're they have a good marriage and things are going good at home and they are making money and they're not they're living in gated communities instead of just working in them. Yeah. More people would look at that and be like, wow, that's a pretty cool life. I want to be a contractor. Yeah. yeah. I call so, it having cash in the front pocket of your jeans. Like actual <laughs> cash, wads of cash that looks like a cell phone in there. I love it. I love it. So, yeah. so anyway, um, so one of the strategies, there's the cost times to direct, you know, so, and if you pay, you know, if you have a crew in the field, just for clarity's sake, for people listening, yeah. all right, whatever it's, whatever you get to write a check for to produce Mrs. Smith's project, mm. that's cost of goods. That everything that touches that project is right. Cost you rent a piece of equipment, you get a permit, the materials, the labor. Yep. Okay. That's all, it's all there. Okay. Yeah. So you could just add all that up, multiply times two. And this is what we sell it at. Another strategy that I, I've used in the past, worked with people, some of our GCs do, is they'll do a blended markup. Mm. So they'll mark their labor up times three or four. They'll mark the material up like, you know, 1.1, 1. 1. 1, 1. Yeah, 1. just a bit. 1.5, whatever. And make, you know, if the material costs them a hundred bucks and they make 115, but they're making 70% on labor, whatever the it's numbers blended. work out, it's yeah. blended to be around a 50. Either way, and, you need to know your numbers. You, you right. know, you just, you just made me think of something and there's a million questions going on in our mm -hmm. listeners' minds right now. There's guys who are saying, you know what, this is a nice episode, but I do cost plus, so I don't care. Mm-hmm. But there's other guys who are saying, well, hang on a second. Every time I go do an estimate, somebody says, can you break down your labor and material so I understand how you came up with that price? Mm -hmm. What do you do in that situation when somebody says, break down labor and materials? Um, now, there's always context to a conversation. There's a there's a spirit of the conversation. There is, so, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I'm going to bank on the fact that you and I've had a good spirit of conversation and this is the real life situation. Hey, Tom, you know, you're you're five grand higher than everybody else. I, I'm going to need you to go ahead and break that down for me. Yeah. Our, our default answer without saying it is no. That's okay. where we're going at this. Yeah, I agree. We're not okay. doing that. Yeah. But I'm going to say it like, you know, Dominic, that's, that's interesting. What what are you hoping to learn from, from that exercise? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, I'm going to turn it back around on them. I might mirror, like, I'm going to need you to break down your prices, break down my prices. Like, it's curiosity mm. or, you know, Hey, I'm happy to talk to you about, about the numbers. I have nothing to hide here. What are you hoping to achieve by breaking this down? And sometimes they just, um, they're just curious. I've had that where clients, I, I, instead of just going, well, it's this for this and this for this and so on. Yeah. We went and priced the paint or we went and priced those spindles. Yeah. If you're going to redo my stairs, these spindles shouldn't be more than. Yeah. And I've also found the people asking you to itemize the crap like that usually end up not being the best clients. I was, this got, is where you, I was going on You have a marketing that. problem. You have oh, a marketing God, Tom, problem. Tom, you must right? be listening to yeah, my show, we're, man. We're here. You don't, you don't have a sales problem in the moment. What you yeah. actually have is a marketing mm -hmm. problem because you've probably defaulted to the fact that you're just taking mm -hmm. whoever comes through the door. You're not proactively marketing, going to the nice neighborhoods, going to the yeah. right kind of customers, going with the right commercial GCs. If you're mm -hmm. doing commercial work, you're just taking whatever floats past you. And of course, dealing with the leftovers, you've got to eat crumbs. Yeah. 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 yeah it's funny so, you went to that same place. Not funny. I mean, you and I yeah. do the same thing. You actually have a marketing problem. You got to fix at the doorstep right now. Yeah. I've, um, 
you know, these are, these are things we, we do role plays five days a week, three, you know, 12 months a year in our program, like live sales training role plays where you put mm. yourself in these situations. And um, so these are role plays, but I've had it, I've had real life situations where people wanted me to break things down. And I used to do it. I used to go back and do revisions and break it all down and this and that, and still not get the job. Right. So yeah, this is several years ago. And I'm like, um, we have a broken system. You so at, I, at some point you got to to the realization this yeah. ain't working. So then I started, and just for anyone that wants it, maybe a tool or a, a, an analogy to use, is the restaurant industry. You order the the cheeseburger. I don't care what you order. They don't itemize it on. You know, the lettuce costs this much, and the this cost the burger was this much. Yeah. But what do you see on a menu? You see an a la carte menu, right? So when you a la carte french fries they're more money than they are when they come with the meal okay it's economy of scale yeah. it's the same with construction so one of the things i started doing dominic was people would go hey can we break this down or can you break this down and itemize this or whatever and and i'd say um yeah you know i'd be happy to do that for you but you're not gonna like it and they'd be like why am, why am i not gonna like it i said well for instance, I said, when I'm in here, talk painting, right? If I'm painting the whole house yeah, and you want me to break out the ceilings, I now have to price them to cut in clean against the walls because I don't know if you're just picking the ceilings. Mm. I got to cover. I, I, now I have to still cover the whole room at a, at a greater length. I got to cut in. Mm. I'm going to need, you know, if we hit the walls and it's not razor sharp, we're going to have to touch up the walls, which means we're now going to have an issue with the paint matching, which might we'll probably have to repaint the whole damn wall and blah, blah, blah. So the few times that I would actually do it, we had a software where I could go in, hit a button, it would itemize everything. And I would just mark it up even more like 30, 40%. And I'd hand it to them the total, maybe it was 40 grand to start all in. Yeah. And when I itemized it, the total could have been 70 grand. You know, and so that was a way that, and then I would explain economy of scale. You know, if we're in here and I'm painting everything in the yeah. room, it's actually cheaper to do all these things. To do everything so, at once. It's it's yeah. the same thing as why you have your family over for a big meal and we don't come to your mm -hmm. house for the appies and go to the next house for the, right. for the turkey and then we go somewhere else for the dessert. It doesn't make any sense. I think what, yeah. what this all comes down to is something that a lot of people are afraid of. First, and it, it comes back to the opening of our show is I have to know my numbers. Mm -hmm. I have to know my numbers because there's got to be a point in time when the conversation is over and they want to, if they do want to push, I have to say, that is great. You should go with the other guy mm -hmm. or you should keep mm -hmm. looking for a contract because I'm not your guy. I can't, I just can't do it. Yeah. I, don't get me wrong. I can do this job. I can't do it for that math, mm -hmm. right? Just because your mailman said this should be no more than a 6000 or a $60,000 job, you're, I, I don't tell him how to deliver the mail. Right. Just because your father-in-law yeah. said he used to be a contractor doesn't mean he's a contractor this year in this market, hiring the kind of quality people I have. And you have to come back and have that conversation. So I, I, one of my buddies is a, he's a um, GC and you're reminding me of this story. He was telling me <clears throat> he's um, he's also one of our sales coaches, Derek Johnson. He's awesome. And he, well, he's landscape. I'm sorry, not GC, he's landscape, mm. but Derek goes um, uh, water features and stuff like that in Nashville. So this uh this guy goes well you know my my dad said uh that it shouldn't cost more than 10 grand to do something like this right, right? yeah and and this is in the say one of the reasons people are uncomfortable with this in the sales process and that, number one they don't have confidence numbers number two they don't know how to truly communicate with people right right and without getting offended and just get, say things and, normally and being on and, the defense yeah, and so yeah. so Derek very great spirit <clears throat> of the conversation tonally just goes huh, your, your dad inflection of voice. Yeah. And they're like, well, yeah, my dad used to be a landscape contractor. And, um, and Derek just goes, uh, huh, used to be. <laughs> okay. I see where you're going with this. And yeah. the guy goes, yeah, he used to be, used to be a landscape contractor. And he said, it should only be 10, 10 grand. And Derek and this guy had a great rapport and stuff. And, and he goes, um, he goes, well, Hey, that's all good. And, you know, I don't know your dad or whatever, but just out of curiosity, what, why, why, why is he used to be a landscape contractor? Yeah. And the, the guy goes, Followed well, it by silence. He, uh, yeah. And he, and the guy literally opened up and it was just like, 
well, he just, it was too hard to stay in business and blah, 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 and this and that. And he had to shut it down and go get a job. And Derek just goes, huh, that's, so what, what do you think we should do next? And they're like, well, yeah, I get your point. It costs a lot of money to be in business and they sign the contract. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it, when you learn really how to ask good questions and, you know, you know, Tom, I, I, this is, it, we try to always break it down to the simplest thing, mm -hmm. but for anybody out there who says, look, I don't want to be a sales guy. I want to make fences, mm -hmm. decks, pergolas. I want to do roofing. I want to do painting. I want to do cabinets. You don't actually need any sales scripts from Tom or I, you need to be curious and you need to care. Bingo. That's oh it. Those God. two things. Gone. Like you That's said it. with your, your buddy That's there, it. I think you said his name is Tom. Derek. Derek, I'm sorry. Derek, he, he was curious and he cared. What do you mean? Your dad used to be mm -hmm. a landscape contractor and then yeah. you're just quiet. You're just quiet. But if you go into yeah. everything being curious and caring, you're going to be able to sift and sort. Not everybody's going to become a client, but the ones that do, yeah. you're going to get fairly compensated. You and I aren't talking about chasing FEMA around the country, trying to do right. price projects right. and ripping right. people off a city at a time. No, we're just talking about feeding our, uh, paying our guys so they can feed themselves and drive a decent truck, mm -hmm. being able to take home money that I can put braces on my daughter if she needs them, mm -hmm. and keep this company running so that next week if there's a problem I can come back and fix it. You know, there's a flood in the backyard, yeah. the the fence post raised up. Okay, I can come and fix that, no problem. But if I'm not around to do it, what good am I? Yeah, yep, yeah. It's it's um, contractors always say, "Oh, I want to be fair to my clients," yet they're they'll be unfair. Not to fair to themselves, themselves and their family. You know, and, uh, and, and listen, you know, like you said a second ago, not everyone's going to be your customer, but reverse engineer all the way to the beginning, like before the sales call, what kind of leads do you want coming in? Right. Build your brand, show us, you know, behind the scenes, show us your team, your culture, what's going on like to where there, there's an old saying by one of the marketing gurus in the world a million years ago said that good marketing, um, is like a great drive in golf. It puts the ball right next to the cup where the sales calls just a, just a gimme putt. Tap it. Yeah. The better your way. marketing and brand is, okay, and you're speaking to your ideal clients and educating them and all the things that we could talk for days on, that moves the sale closer to the cup to where you, you get on the phone with somebody and it's like a gimme putt. You know, because you've been mm -hmm. giving so much value that you've established yourself, position yeah. yourself as the expert. And, and their safety in a brand. So a lot of guys don't get the prices they deserve because they haven't built a brand. Yeah. Or, and, you know? and again, back to, they don't have confidence in their numbers. You just right. know you can't do it. And why don't but, they build a brand? Because they're too chicken to raise their prices to have a higher profit to reinvest <laughs> back into the business. So everything's well, connected here. I, it's a, it, uh, we could add some things to that. And one of the mm -hmm. things I'd add is where you started in the beginning, which was mindset. Mm -hmm. A lot of people listening, and I'm going to put words in people's mouths. And you're going to say, I've never actually met Dom. I've never actually had coffee with Tom. How come they know what I'm saying to myself when I'm alone in the truck? Mm -hmm. I'm not a marketer. Yeah, I'm not a salesman. I've never run a company like this before. Mm -hmm. uh, at my kitchen table when I was seven years old, my parents didn't talk about business, but here I am trying it's my hardest and I'm, I'm reaching out to try and find info. So the, at the very start, the fact that you're listening to this show or Tom's puts you in a, the, the it's not even the 1%. It's a fraction of 1% of right. all the contractors. So the fact that you listen to shows like ours puts you in some pretty rare air already. Mm -hmm. But now don't waste that effort. Do something based on what Tom and I are talking about today and make that one change in your business, but make one little change every day. Talk to better customers, have better branding. Yep. Make sure your guys are wearing their uniforms. If you've got hats, everybody's got to wear a mm -hmm. hat. When the guy says, I don't want to wear your hat. I don't like those colors. It fits funny over my ears. You tell them in the nicest way possible. I'm just going to get to the end point. That's yeah. the hat we wear on this crew. Right. <laughs> that, that just is the hat we wear on this group. Now, and again, I'm, I'm cutting through a lot of uh, niceties. If you don't want to wear that hat, yeah, it is a big deal. And yeah, this is the hat we wear on this crew. So if you want to be on this crew, that's the hat we wear. Do you see where we're going with this? Chucky? Yeah. Like, that's the hat Chucky. we wear on this crew. Anyways, no, and, and I know that sounds like a tiny thing, but all of those things add up. That's the brand. That's the marketing. That's the team that shows up. That's the team we pay. Well, how many of us go, you know, we're a team here. And yet we're not wearing the same uniform every day. Yeah. Think about that, right? Does a football team take the field and everyone wears the jersey they want to wear? That no, this bears. is the logo on the side of the helmet. Yeah. This is, this is, I mean, Penn State, my God, you know, this is, we wear black cleats. Like that was their thing. I don't know if it still is, but for so many years they wore yeah, black no, oh, cleats. Oh, listen, lots of teams are like the, that. The yeah. Dark Navy jersey and the white helmet with a stripe. That's it. I don't like their uniform. 
okay, tough. Then you don't play here, you know? So yeah. Yeah. I don't there's uh, that whole thing. There's, um, there's a ranch saying, and people who have listened to my show before will have heard this, but I'm going to say it again. Cause I love it. This is, I learned from my rancher buddies. Yeah. If you stand for nothing, you will fall for anything. Mm-hmm. So I've got to know what I stand for in my marketing, in my mm-hmm. sales, in my pricing, in knowing my numbers. Actually, let's yeah. do this for a second because there's people out there who we've, we've, we've captured the curiosity. They agree with us and now they're looking for direction. Mm-hmm. So uh, Tom, let me redirect this question. Okay. I do want to know my numbers. Tom, where do I start? Hands down, start job costing your projects. Like I, you know, because to me, that's learning your numbers. Every yeah. time you job cost a job, which means, guys, it's just you're looking at the game tape. You played the game. Now go look at the film the next day. That's all it is. Yeah. And if you're on a project that's multiple weeks, job cost every week. Where are we? Right. Yeah. So I just think if if you want to if you want to go from zero to 60 in three seconds flat with mm-hmm. your numbers, start job costing. OK, yeah. that's that's level number one from there. Everything else opens up to you, like break even and this and that and yeah. cost per lead and acquisition and sales and the, all the complicated stuff. But if you just started doing that, just going, the simple I, stuff, I thought the job was going to take this and then this is what it actually took. Yeah. How did we do now? You can make real time corrections, you know, maybe I mean, so, dude, and, and it's not always that you're not charging enough. Okay. Um, when I first started job costing our painting company many years ago, we were doing these homes for a, a certain custom builder. And just to make the math easy here, um, we'd go in and do all the trim package and the stain work and this and that. And then we'd send our paint, our wall crew in to do all the walls, right? Hmm. And bang it out. So, and most of the houses were like, they're very similar size and it's this model and you've done it 30 times. Yeah. Left a year, hand, right? right hand. It's right? all, so, yeah. yeah. Left hand layout. Yeah. I had in our, we were, we were giving 100 man hours to do the walls. Just call it that. Sure. We started job costing and in reality, it was taking us 80. Mm. So the crew loved it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the problem was we were actually, we, our price points were fine. We just had too many man hours in it from what, you know what I'm saying? So I was, I was 20 man hours, call it a hundred bucks an hour. What's that? Two. Were you overpaying for paint? You were overpaying for labor. Yeah. Because we didn't put like, we bid it, but we didn't really job cost it. Right. You know, and then we started tracking it kind of quietly. We just, my partner and I at the time started mm. just tracking it without really saying anything. And we realized on average, we were finishing in around 80 hours. So 20% less than what sure. we were bidding. So what we did is we started training our crew leaders on tracking the man hours and giving them job budgets of time and all these things that you and I do for a living or for yeah. people. I'm just saying, sometimes it's not, you have to raise your prices. Sometimes you need to adjust your production rates. You know, yeah. uh, on the, fl- so we, I was bidding too many hours on jobs, which in turn, if I bid other builders or whatever with that, I'm pricing myself out of work, not because I'm too expensive, but I, my production rates were messed you've up. Got, yeah. You're putting the wrong inputs. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then on the flip side, because we job costed and, and our crew leaders were amazing. We had weekly meetings and we were totally a team like airplane, two wings, sales and operations. Right. I remember one of my crew leaders one day, Jose in the meeting, he goes, Hey, I've been doing some uh, some documenting on the last few jobs, and he says he starts with you're uh, you're not giving us enough time to paint baseboards. Now you know as well as I do, the crew is always going. You don't give enough enough time, time for this. Right? That was that's pretty specific, actually. If you broke yeah. it down to the point where you said baseboards, because is good. when we bid it, we lit we had it per surface, so sure. the hours. Yeah. Okay, he goes, not giving us enough time for baseboards pause. Hmm. But I realized you're giving us about 15 minutes too much time on each door. So I pulled out my iPad with our software, went into the production rates. And I said, how much more time do you need on base? And we adjusted it. I went into the doors. I took off 15 minutes a door off the production rate. Problem solved. Now we're more accurate. So, you know, estimating is art and science. 
you know, and, and it's, and if you're not job costing and getting feedback from your teams, and it isn't always about putting your teams in the doghouse where they don't finish on time. Maybe you're a bad estimator. That's, you know, that happens more often than I'll tell you, man, come up. The longer longer I I was out of the field, the faster of a painter I was. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey you were the landscaper's dad or you were the dad right oh i right. could do that job for 10 grand that's yeah, well, true it, isn't it yeah. I, I would do a house like this by myself in three days i don't know why it's taking five of you a week you know and it's yeah. because we didn't have any clear measuring uh um clear metrics to measure on and standards and production rates so all these yeah. things combined you know, man, you start putting attention on this. What you focus on improves. You put your your attention on what, raising yeah. your gross profit a few points. You guys are going to kill it. Yeah. So, and how if you want double your materials, if you do a blended thing like we talk about, just you know, um, last thing here, we've also found our most successful contractors that are making bank. Like I'm talking, making real money. Yeah. All the time, their close mm-hmm. rates hover around twenty percent. Okay, it's interesting so, you say that. Because how often do you hear somebody at the beginning of the relationship to say, well, Tom, you know, you don't understand our, our closing rates, like 90%. If I'm in front of them, I close. Yeah. And I, and I'm always coming back saying a high conversion rate is not a good thing. Yeah. I think there's it. And it's usually in my experience, those conversations, people have the off the charts closing rate, you know, that are also the ones struggling the most with cash flow because they don't know their numbers and it's, it's, it's about the right jobs, right? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's about the right numbers. Now we, we have this crazy thing where we teach people how to pre-qualify before you go out there. So in our community, you'll have guys that have a 90% close rate when they go to the site to pick up a deposit check. Right. Mm. But their overall close rate of all leads that came in. Oh, but that's, they're going to see a well-qualified they're, prospect. They're, going they're to not see, just going so to see raw prospects. They've already had the conversation of what it's going to cost. Now it's yours to go out and confirm and not the, screw up by throwing up. The harder the I qualify, so, the easier it is to sell. If you, you if you front load that mm-hmm. hard work of asking the tough questions, making sure all decision mm-hmm. makers are present, making sure everybody's going to be sitting down for the decision, making sure you have a clear understanding of what the project scope is, who else is a competitor. If you do all that up front, mm-hmm. by the time pe- you're going to weed people out, they're like, oh, I, my husband can't be here. My wife won't take part in that conversation. Okay, that's great. You're not a lead for us. But once we yeah. put people through all those little filters, by the time you get to decision, their hair is on fire. They're like, Dom, when can you start? I'm like, well, yeah. let's look at the calendar. Let's figure that out. Well, what's also happening there, man, is, is the fact that you are exuding confidence in your process and what you do when you take control of the sales process that way. Hmm. You know, you're not reeking of desperation like most of your competitors are who don't who, yeah. who don't understand that your number one role in business is to run the business, not to paint the thing or whatever the thing is. Yeah. So when you but you when you're out there and you could look somebody in the eye. I mean, I remember the first time somebody said to me, You're and and I learned, you know, we were doing sales training and I was really good with objections and my confidence. And when when I finally turned the corner, yeah, you know, when somebody says your price is too high. We usually go into defensive tap dancing mode, right? I got a, oh, well, overhead and gas and inflation and blah, blah, blah. Nobody cares about that. They care about them. Yeah. And so, and I believe that prospects are trained just to say stupid stuff like- Oh, they only have one script. Is, yeah, yeah. Your, your price, price is, is too high. high. Yeah. yeah. And the other script they have is, I got to ask my wife. Yeah. You've got that hidden decision maker and they've sent her away mm-hmm. or, you know, the husband. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then at one point, man- I was just like, why am I the one on the defense? I do this every day. I know what things cost. I know what can go wrong. I can. So it was just a, a reframe of mindset. And this guy's me, well, Tom, you know, your, uh, your, your price is just, just too high. Hmm. Just like that. The old Tom would have defended the new Tom. I looked at him and I go, Hey, that that's interesting. What makes you say that? And I just shut my mouth. Now he has to justify his position. Mm. And he fumbled through it like a total moron because he had no basis to stand on. Yeah, they only have one script. You yeah. know? And I and he's like, well, and I, and I let him off the hook. I said, well, listen, um, if, if you don't want to write a check for what it's going to take for us to do this, totally cool. You know, this is what we cost mm. to give you the outcome that you want. What would you like to do next? He hired me. Yeah. But there's he, confidence in your delivery. Yeah, I'd hire you. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's and you don't always get them because some people just aren't going to pay no matter what it is. I mean, one of our people in our community, I, we just did a two hour training call before I hopped on this with you here today. We have this member. Um, she's a business owner and, and she's been working on a guy. It is now November 8th, 2023. She started working on this guy's contract for some remodeling thing in February. And he keeps giving her the runaround. It's time and to go. Won't make, and, and, Cut it. and so she's like, I'm all stressed and this and that. And I go to the group. I go, guys, what are you doing if you're her? The chat box likes up and the guy's name's Ryan. Fire Ryan. He's not your customer. Call mm. him up right now and go, listen, it's been 10 months. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Yeah. Um, we're not going to be able to handle your project because we just got other things to do. And I said, if you were to do that, right, how would you feel 10 seconds afterwards? She's like, the weight of the world would be off me because yeah. she's been making decisions all year on this. Waiting for hope. this. Ryan. We call that we call it Hope Island. I'm living on Hope Island for this project, yeah. you know, and I'm not committing to other things because this one's going to close any day now. And it's like you're act you're you're operating this ten months or whatever it's been from a point of place of desperation instead of confidence. Yeah. So you all need to fight for your value, fight for your time, and protect your sanity and all this stuff. And it's I don't know, man. It's a lot easier when you're making money. And um, if I'm going to be stressed, money ain't going to be one of the problems. I like it. Like that's that's what one of our goals is. You got 99 problems and money ain't one. Money ain't so. one of them. I could solve <laughs> I could solve some things with money. Hey, Tom, people have probably loved the interview, have probably loved some of your insights. They want to find you in this big, wide, hairy world that we're in. Where the heck do we find you? Yeah, you go anywhere, contract or fight online, and we're standing there somewhere. Um, I got... Uh, if they go to sellunafraid.com, that's the name of my next book that's coming out in 2024. But we have a we have a um, a guide to help you spot the cheap tire kicking prospects <laughs> yeah. before you ever spend a minute of your life standing in their home or yard. And uh, there's some just good word tracks and things for your your mental toughness around sales and stuff that's been pretty helpful to people. So, so. crazy important. We're always going to find those price objections, but how you deal with them is going to get you yep. to the other side in your business. You got it. Tom Reber, thank you so much. Loved having you on here. We'll have you back again. We'll pick apart some other topic one day soon. I appreciate you having me, man. It was great talking with you. Thanks, Tom. Well, 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 what did you learn from Mr. Tom Reber? And what can you put in place? I mean, that's the challenge both he and I laid out. Let's put something in place. Change something in your business so you take one more step forward. For this portion of the podcast, I'm going to break it into three equal parts. First, I'm going to start off with a quote. Actually, I've got two quotes for you today. Why? Because I want to reset your mind. You notice that Tom and I talk kind of the same language. And I wonder if you have that language as well, that language of that quiet confidence, that certainty, the belief in the simple systems. And I want you to have that. So today we're going to talk about that a little bit. Then I'm going to ask you a favor. And then we're going to identify a common problem for business owners in the trades. Then I'm going to simplify that problem and I'm going to give you steps on how to fix it. So first, let me start with a power quote. We're not going to do a joke today. We're going to do a power quote. You remember that today's topic is how much should I mark up my materials on a construction or contracting job? Who wouldn't want to know the answer to that? Well, as you know, years ago, I was business partners with Brian Tracy. Now, Brian Tracy has written many, many, many books, 70, maybe 80 books. It's insane, really. Um, but some of the more famous books that he has written that you have probably read are Eat That Frog, which is a book on time management and procrastination. He has also written The Psychology of Selling, The Psychology of Achievement. Um, and this particular quote is coming from one of his books called Maximum Achievement, Strategies and Skills That Will Unlock Your Hidden Powers to Succeed. Now, remember, when you hear similarities between myself and Brian, it's because we worked side by side together with Brian. I built a 237 unit business that started with six units and I turned it around. And I did the same thing that I'm asking you to do in your business focus on simple systems, have clarity, and work towards that with absolute conviction. Now, catch how that follows with Brian Tracy's quote. Here it is Positive expectations are the mark of the superior personality. I have positive expectations, and I'm sure you do too. And I want to commend you for that when you say, we will get that job done. Oh, we're doing an excavation and we hit uh, a rock that we didn't expect to be there. We'll get the job done. Positive expectations are the mark of the superior personality. 
It doesn't matter what trade we're in. Having those positive expectations and finding a way, which is what Brian's talking about here, that's the mark of a superior personality. So if you're thinking to yourself, I want to mark up my materials, but you don't understand my market. They just won't accept it. I'm going to come back and remind you, positive expectations are the mark of the superior personality. I'll urge you, I'll remind you to ask that powerful question sequence that starts with how can I? So if you're saying to yourself now, um, you know, when, when you hear myself and Tom talking about how much should I mark up my materials in a construction or contracting job, and you heard the whole thing, and you went, ah, it's not going to work here for whatever reason. I want you to change that in your mind and change the question in your head to this. How can I find a way to mark up my materials on a construction or contracting job? How can I is the question changer. So that's a Brian Tracy quote. But you know, that Brian Tracy quote reminded me of another quote from a great boxer, Jack Dempsey. He was a pro boxer at the turn of the century. A champion is someone who gets up when he can't. A champion is someone who gets up when he can't. You're going to encounter resistance. The first time you apply a materials markup of 50%, somebody's going to say something to you and knock it out of your hand. You're not going to get that deal. But you know what? Go fail fast. That's what I would do. One of my famous sayings, and I don't know, it just came out of my head, is when I'm learning something, I'm going to go get my head kicked in until I figure it out. But I'm going to figure it out. Remember. Positive expectations are the mark of a superior personality. I'm always working towards that. And I want to encourage you to keep doing the same thing in your business. Keep working towards positive expectations. Are people pulling at you all the time? Yes. Are customers asking for more and more? Yes. Are suppliers giving you less and yes? Yes. Are you being pulled for time all the time? Yes. But there are simple systems to solve that. And I hope you're taking one tip from every episode of this podcast to take forward in your life and in your business. Anyways, I want to, um, I'm going to ask you a favor. And that favor, as you probably already know, is to ask you to leave a review. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, leave a thumbs up, positive remark. But um, I feel for a while, like I've been just talking to a wall. And then I got a nice message from Dennis. Dennis, thank you. Um, Dennis left a review. And then he also emailed me this story about paying it forward. I don't know where he found it. It came out of Arkansas. It's a story about a man at a market. Um, So I'm just going to read it to you as is. But it's about paying it forward. And I'd like you to pay forward something in the world. Again, it feels like it's for me, but it's not. I want you to leave a review so somebody else out there in their contracting business who's craving answers and ready to take the next step knows that this is a safe place to land. At least look around, get some good information. They might move on, but you've done your part. Here's the story that Dennis sent. Uh, the title is The Man at the Market. When the, supermark- when the supermarket clerk tallied up my groceries, it was $12 over what I had on me. I began to remove items from the bags when another shopper handed me a 20. Please don't put yourself out, I said to him. Let me tell you a story, he said. My mom is in the hospital with cancer. I visit her every day and bring her flowers. I went this morning and she got mad at me for spending my money on more flowers. She demanded that I do something else with that money. So here. Please accept this. It's my mom's flowers. And that's a story out of Peel, Arkansas. It's very nice. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate it. And Dennis, I actually appreciate the fact that you reached out and sent me that story. Um, So folks, we talk about paying it forward. We talk about finding ways to add good to the world. And, you know, it comes back. It just comes back. So that's a very nice story. Let's go and um, uh, touch here a little bit on a business problem. Simplify and solve a common business problem. The common business problem And one of the things that Tom and I talked about here today on materials markup is profit leaks. There are so many places in a construction business where you're doing things right. You didn't expect the sentence to go that way, did you? You're doing a lot of things right. I already know that you're a go-getter. I already know that you work hard. I already know that you work smart. I already know that you outwork most people around you. I also know that you're generally disappointed, generally disappointed in the kind of people that show up to work if they're not putting in their full effort. And it kind of frustrates you. I also know that you're always looking for ways to get ahead. And when you do find a good idea that's easy to digest and easy to put in place, you do it. So there are eight places that you can look. And, you know, the analogy that I use is the analogy of a path that you're walking along. And each of those, each step of that path has a stepping stone. If you stop for a moment and kneel down, you pick up the stone ahead of you. 
that stone has the title of one of the prophet leaks. One of the prophet leaks is carved right in the top of that stone. But you pick it up and you look underneath and there's a prophet leak. Just go fix that. And after you're done fixing that prophet leak, put that stone back down then stand on it and look to the next one and the next one and the next one. There's eight profit leaks in any construction or contracting business. They just exist. It's not different in Toledo than it is in Tacoma. It's not different in Tampa. It's not different in Toronto. I'm trying to think of uh, other cities that start with T and countries in Australia and New Zealand. It'll come to me. Toowoomba. Toowoomba is a place in Australia. I think it was there. Listen, it's all in front of you. And there, I, I have a simple system. All you got to do is text me to get the report. And then you can grab a coffee, sit at a coffee shop, put in your headphones with a nice hot cup of coffee, face the corner, grab a pencil or a pen, your favorite pencil or pen, and just noodle around the document. Think about where you could find those opportunities in your business. The, the document's called the Profit Leaks document. You just text me. You guys know the number already, but I'll say it again for those of you who are new to uh, the podcast. The cell phone number to ask for one of the free downloads is 315. 315- 9037853. All right, this might be the first time you're listening with your spouse in the car. And your spouse, let's say it's your wife, is saying, you know what? That guy's offering some stuff for free. Why don't you grab it? So write down the number 315-903-7853. So, but just send me the keyword profit leaks because the title of the thing is way too long. Don't do not text me this. Quick report, find and fix the eight profit leaks in your contracting business. <laughs> Who's got time for that? Just send me the word profit leaks and text it to me at the, the number. By the way, that's a new number. Some of you are still texting me at the old number, but I get too much spam at the old number. So this is the number we're using now. That number is, or the new number, sorry, the new number to text me at to get the download is 315-903-7853. And it's just, just say profit leaks. What you get in that document is a download. So you download it, put it on your hard drive. I want you to have it on your hard drive. So you have it as a reference forever and ever. You know, we actually just ran a boot camp class. And on the boot camp, I'm training a new coach who runs a multi-million dollar new home building company. And also on that call is somebody who's just starting up their cabinetry company. They both got value from doing the uh, find and fix your eight profit leaks. And the only difference between the two of them was the number of zeros after their annual sales. But they still found value. They still found value because the value is there. Remember, these are the the stepping stones on the path to profitability. You pick up one stone, you look under it. Oh, there you are. That little profit leak, you little you little sprat. Go and fix it. Put the leak down. Put that flagstone down. Step on it and go to the next one. They're always going to be there, but you and I need to manage those. You know, one of the profit leaks I found with somebody is so easy. By the way, when I say this, you'll nod your head. You'll go, that's ah, too easy. It's too easy, Tom. I'm not going to, I'm not even going to bother with that one because it's so easy. Well, here it comes. I just sat down with a brand new client and we went and looked for profit leaks. And one of the very first things that we did was we looked at overheads, which comes here. That's one of the eight profit leaks that comes under budgeting. And we went and looked through overheads, but we did a line by line analysis of the overheads. Snooze fest. Snooze fest. It's like eating tablespoons full of dust to me, but we have to do it. Anyways, here's what we found. He's been paying for a cell phone plan that he thought he got rid of two years ago. Two years he's been playing, paying for a cell phone plan. And Verizon's not going to call him. They're happy to keep taking that money. And they're not saying, oh, nothing's going through that account. Two years he's been paying that one. And then the other thing we found is that he subscribed to a, um, su- sorry, subscribed to an online service that helps him edit movies, clips, reels for Instagram. He pays $900 a year for that. It was just about to auto renew. So he would have paid. So he didn't use it at all. He's never used it. So he's already blown the 900 bucks for the first year. And it was just about to auto renew for the second year. Incredible. So what did he save right there? Those are the profit leaks. You know, many times you guys have heard me talk about my uncle, the uncle that got me on the path to business improvement back when I was a kid. And I was, you know, I was playing at running a business. I did small like home renovations and painting and stuff like that. But I never, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just sort of figuring it out as I went along, which is fair. How many of us are doing that? But I got so frustrated. And I don't know if I've ever told you guys this story, but I got frustrated a couple of different times. But one of the worst times was I was dating this very nice girl and my van broke down. Now you got to listen. My van was a horrible 77 Dodge Tradesman painted red. 
I painted it by myself in the alley with leftover paint. Like it was a horrible man. Anyways, it broke down. And uh, so my girlfriend had to come pick me up. And of course, that night was our anniversary, you know, our dating anniversary. And uh, she not only picked me up because my van was broke down, but she paid for dinner. And I felt about two feet tall. I mean, in reality, I'm only three feet tall than that anyway. But you know what I mean? Like, I, it was just devastating. And so my uncle, you know, I, as we do, we're Italians. I probably saw him at a baptism or something. So I'm talking about my business. And yeah, as I'm in business. I'm doing these things. I'm a contractor now, too, because I used to work for him as a framer. He asked me a couple of questions. And he's like, you got to take this seriously, man. You're doing it all wrong. So anyways, he got me in touch with his accountant. His accountant actually started me on this path. And then I made some other life changes. And I, but I kept going on this path of business improvement and self-improvement. That was over, well, that was over 30 years ago. I've been in business for myself for over 25 years. I've been a business coach for 23 years. Long time. 24 in a couple of months. Anyways, I want you to have this Profit Leaks report. It works. It's simple. You take the Profit uh, profit Leaks report, you print it off. You go to a coffee shop. You put in your headphones. Get a hot cup of coffee. Face the corner. Nice, fresh, new pencil. And you sit there and you noodle in the corner. I'm going to do this. I'm going to change that. And that's how you find those profit leaks like my client just did. That money that he was just paying to Verizon should have come home to him and should have been plunked down on his kitchen table. This is one of the sayings that my uncle said to me. Uh, you know, he said, he's told me a bunch of cool things, but one of them is, Dom, if you could afford to lose a dollar in your business, you could have afforded to take that dollar out. It's the same effect. I could have taken that, or I'm sorry, he could have taken that 900 bucks. I could have taken the dollar, right? But that $900 just got burned. It just got, who likes the smell of burning money? Verizon's not going to give it back. That's gone. Sorry, 900 was for the video, not Verizon. Anyways, if you want to find your profit leaks, the first thing to do is get the report so you have something to match yourself against. Like it'll give you an order of operations, an SOP, right? SOP stands for Standard Operating Procedure. Tom and I just talked about this today. Materials markup. Materials markup is an opportunity, but it's also a threat. It's also a potential bottleneck. We cover it in the Profit Leaks Report. So go ahead, grab that from me again. Text me. You guys know the number. Those of you who've listened to the show for any amount of time know the number. For those of you who are new, welcome. But the number to text me at is 315-903-7853. And you just send the keyword Profit Leaks, and that way I know which one to send back to you. Then you've got it and you're off to the races. All right. Thank you. I really appreciate you being here. I look forward to the day when we can meet like humans. We can have a glass of wine or a cup of coffee and just talk like real people across the table. Until then, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks. (laughs) 